you are tuned in to the channel of margin computers today we are going to talk about multi threading see students multi threading is the process it is the capability of any operating system or programming technology in which one application can be divided can be broken down into different parts each part being called a thread see in the diagram what we have done is we have divided up the we have divided up an application into various parts and each part would be called a thread now one cpu will be at work and the cpu will first take care of the statements contained in the thread one now those statements some of those statements would be executed for a specific duration of the time then cpu will switch its attention to the second thread and some statements of the thread 2 would be executed for specific duration and after that the control will switch to thread 3 and so on thread 4 thread 5 and thread 6 so again the control will come back to thread 1 and it will start from the location it has left off the last time and after executing thread 1 again for a specific duration the control will move over to thread 2 and again it will start from the location it has left off the last time then thread 3 thread 4 in the similar fashion remember one thing as i am explaining the control is moving from thread 1 to thread 2 thread 3 thread 4 in a sequential manner it is not necessary it might be possible that first of all thread 4 is started and after executing some statements of the thread 4 the control moves to the thread 1 then to thread 6 it can be in any random order and it can be priority based also now we will talk about what are the different states in which a thread can be present see in the diagram any thread that is supposed to be executing in a multi threading manner is first put into the new state new state is also called new born state now in the new born state what happens is uh it begins its life cycle and any thread begins its life cycle by being put into the new state actually any thread which is in the new state is not getting executed but it is ready to be executed now after new state the control uh, the the thread is sent into the runnable state so that means the thread will start executing its task so when the when any thread particular thread is in the runnable state what might happen is it may pause or it may terminate now first we will talk about pause which is also called the state of waiting a thread is sent into the waiting state when another thread becomes active in and the current thread has to wait for its turn so this is called the waiting state another reason could be the timed waiting state in the timed waiting state what happens is the current thread is uh, halted for a specific duration of time and once the whole task is finished the thread is terminated means all the resources input output resources or say cpu resources they are deallocated from this thread so uh, now we will be uh, going into the programming part and we will be learning how the multi threading programming is performed in java so i would be opening this uh, netbeans yeah this is our program see guys there are two methods by which we can uh, in java we can achieve multi threading first part is by extending the thread class which happens to be a java library class and second way of achieving multi threading in java is by implementing 
an interface called runnable right and we will be talking about these two methods one by one first i am going through this method which extends the thread class right so let's start in this program i have created a class table which extends the thread class and i have declared an instance variable called num this is a simple constructor of the class which has got uh, two formal parameters namely num and string th name is uh, this is the formal parameter which will be collecting the name of the thread anyways let me start from the main thread that is from the method main students always remember the method main is always considered to be a thread particularly the main thread the method main by default the method main is the parent thread of all the threads which are generated so by default the main thread happens to be the emanating thread the parent thread of all the threads by default it is a parent thread now let's start uh, going through the program from the method main what i have done is i have created an object of the table class by writing table tr1 is equal to new table 90 comma mith mith1 now what i am doing is i am going to create an object and it will invoke the constructor with argument with arguments of the table class the value 90 would be passed to the formal parameter num and myth one value will go into which happens to be the name of the thread will go into the formal parameter th name now what will happen is by using this super uh, super uh, technique what i would be doing is i would be invoking the constructor with arguments of the thread class which has been extended by my table class and next thing i am doing is so see listen carefully when i would be using super and passing the name of the thread to the super class thread what would happen is all the resources are ready to be allocated to our new thread after that i am assigning the value of the formal param parameter num into the instance variable num and uh, here i am printing the details of the thread we will talk about this later let me put it into the comments now what is start there is a overridden method called run in our class and always remember any thread that we want to create that we want to generate happens to start its execution only and only once the control enters into the run method and interestingly the run method is invoked not by its own name by but by the name start so when i would call the method with the name start actually the control is going into the method run run method will be invoked i should supplement the statement with this command run method would be invoked even though the call is with the name start so the control has entered into this run method so we would say the thread has started executing now what i am doing in this thread is quite simple i need not explain it in detail we are going to print a mathematical table uh of of the number num and uh, <clears throat> this is the simple loop c is equal to 1 c is less than equal to 10 condition is true and uh, whatever is the value of num i think that happens to be uh, what is the value that was passed from the main 90 okay so the output would be 90 multiplication symbol would be printed as it is the current value of c happens to be 1 so 90 multiplication symbol 1 is equal to assignment operator would be printed as it is and the output of this uh, num into c simple expression is going to be 19 to 190 thread dot sleep students remember sleep method is a static method of the thread class and its job is to suspend the thread to hold the thread for a specific duration of time and the argument like 700 or any argument value that you supply to the sleep method always remember it is in the terms of milliseconds so what i mean to say is this thread of mine will sleep will suspend 
for 700 milliseconds when this thread will sleep for 700 milliseconds that means the other thread which is in the runnable state that will get its chance to get executed now which is the other method this is the parent method parent method main main is by default a thread so what I have done in main is I have uh, tried to print this uh, table of this value 20 m num is equal to 20 same job is being performed here although it can be a different job also no problem so within the try block I am printing this int y is equal to 1 y is less than equal to the same loop is being applied here but we are going to print the table of this uh, value 20 and see carefully this time over the parent thread is going to sleep for 900 milliseconds so when the main thread will sleep the turn of the child thread will be will come right and uh, when child thread will sleep the turn of the parent thread main will come so what would happen is tables of both the values 90 and 20 they will keep printing on the screen and in a uh, in a say um, in a turn by turn manner and uh, one thing more whenever we people are supposed to sleep a uh, method static method of the thread class it is mandatory it is compulsory that we should throw a, an exception called interrupted exception so there are as you know two methods either in the run method I should write throws interrupted exception as you have studied in our lecture of exception handling or what you can do is you can put the sleep method in the try block and it should be followed by the catch block having an uh, argument of interrupted exception class right this is uh, compulsory otherwise uh, your program will not compile okay let me execute this program yeah here we go I will show you the output right see the output what is happening in the output is table of 90 and 20 they are getting mixed up why they are getting mixed up because no thread is being ignored both the threads are being executed concurrently right quite interesting now lastly I would tell you what was the significance of printing this this reference to current object now let me execute the program once again oh, very good see the rest of the program is getting executed in the same fashion but let me explain this uh, printing of this details of threads are getting printed now always remember there are three important details associated with any thread first one is name of the thread second one is its priority number by default the priority number of all the threads is 5 even though we can change it and we will be discussing it in our lecture and third piece of information is about the parent thread it has emanated from of course our child thread myth one has emanated from the parent thread main and I again repeated the middle uh, value piece of information refers to the priority number by default the priority number happens to be 5 so this is the end of this uh, lecture I hope uh, you were uh, able to understand the concept we will ne meet next time thank you